Hi, thanks for dropping in. Uh, my name's Russ and I have to admit to purchasing one of these cheap Chinese laser cutting cum engraving machines. Until a few years ago um, I owned a sheet metal working business which uh, ran a couple of these uh, proper metal cutting laser machines. Now while I'm completing this introduction I will just show you what you could expect from a proper industrial metal cutting laser machine. Now this is a real-time video and it's not speeded up. The manual that was supplied with the machine along with the CD were basically, can I be kind and say, virtually useless. So I had to go out into the big wide world and see if other people had got similar experiences and see if I could learn from them. Below this video there's a series of links. Uh, these are the most useful links that I found. Most of the videos that I looked at out there were basically hobbyists or people that were treating these machines almost as toys. Now these machines are definitely not toys so I thought what I would do is um, prepare a series of videos in a certain amount of detail which will allow you to follow my experience of learning about this machine. Not even hot, not even warm. <laughs> Straight off the wall, the, the flatness of them. Absolutely fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> I'm lucky enough to run a small business and uh, I can claim the VAT back. So at the end of the day, this £1,200 purchase is actually going to only be £1,000. And to get a £1,000 machine into the UK from China with all this kit, it's just unbelievable. Let's just show you what we get. I knew the dimensions of this laser before it arrived and I was able to make myself a small um, mobile frame for it to sit on. Now that blue tube at the back there um, is for conducting the fumes away. So we plan to have the workshop door down most of the time. Let's go down a little bit lower. Yeah, they're about four or five inches off the deck. So the door is virtually closed. What I should do is manufacture a little flat manifold box to put the um, exhaust out beyond the door. Anyway, for the moment, let's just open the workshop door. And uh, let's take a look at what we get for a thousand pounds. On the left there, we've got a, an aquarium pump, which is for circulating the water through the CO2 laser. And then we've also got a little air compressor which is to produce pressurised air for the air assist to assist the cutting and blowing the fumes away. Now I have got an air compressor in here so I may or may not decide to use this, depends how noisy it is. This little plastic box in the background here is partly filled with water at the moment. This is basically distilled water which has been collected from our condensing tumble dryer. The foam pump will sit inside there and hopefully that should be enough water to cool the laser. Well, <clears throat> in addition to those two items that I've just shown you, um, <clears throat> we get a bag with uh, lots of other bits and pieces in. We've got the, uh, the manual, which is in English, <clears throat> but uh, I suspect it's probably in Pigeon English, um, if I read it carefully, but we'll find out as we go through. <clears throat> we've got a nice big clamp for clamping the exhaust duct onto the back of the machine. We've got an earth cable. Um, whether or not we need an earth, I don't know, but we shall have to find out how to do that. I mean, yes, we do need an earth. What sort of earth we need, I can't tell you, because here in the UK, we've got earth cables integrated into our sockets. Whereas in the States, that may not be the case. But on the side of the machine here, you can see that we've got an array of switches, which I'll describe what they do as we get to understand how the machine works. We've got, uh, they've already been supplied with a two pin connector on the side here for connecting these items up. We've got this thing here called a ground connector, but I shall have to have a look behind here to see how this ground is connected to this three pin plug. Here's the great advantage of a, a moving trolley. Well, well the sockets around here and we've got a little cupboard here which we can undo 
and in fact it's this is actually remarkably well made because look it's got removable hinges but you know it's a staggering quality of engineering for what I've paid for it. Okay so it doesn't look as though I need any ground wire at all because the machine looks as though it's all grounded to an earth point here and one of those earth points goes to the mains earth cable. So that means that this machine is fully grounded through my domestic system. Now when I was doing some research about the smaller machines it would appear that you may need to have some sort of serial number off of the circuit boards or the control system to feed into your design coral draw heart software that you're given. I'm presuming that the software for running this machine is supplied on this disc here. At the moment I can't see any obvious serial numbers in here that I should be taking so we shall have to come back at some later stage and work out what it is that we've got to uh, do, if anything. Yeah, one of the reasons why I bought this machine was because I wanted its ability to process DXF files. While we're round at the back of the machine, um, you can see the exhaust vent in here. So these are the water inlet and outlet, and this is the air inlet. But when we look inside, we can find that the water inlet and outlet have got a safety switch in them. Now again, this is a feature which isn't available on many of the other machines. Here we've got a motor which is actually driving the table, the main table, up and down. This is a significant improvement over the small machines which have got a fixed height bed. And hiding in this upper section here, so here at the top we've got the actual laser tube, the CO2 laser tube, with the water cooling in and out, and the mirror at the end here. So obviously the, uh, the CO2, the actual laser beam, comes out the end here. I've worked with proper metal cutting lasers, CO2 lasers, uh, a few years ago. Um, I had my own machines and uh, I'm aware of just how dangerous these things are. You cannot see anything just here when the laser is working but there's a huge amount of power there and when we do get it running I will show you just how powerful it is. I've already removed the protective paper from this window and so let's have a quick look inside the lid. Oh, Before we do that, quite a nice case but when we turn this thing round and have a little bit of a closer look you'll see that it isn't actually particularly brilliant um, sheet metal work engineering. Sad. I mean it, it, it's far from perfect the sheet metal working here because it's a bit all over the place but in general it's it's an amazing piece of kit for a thousand pounds. I should keep using that phrase but let's have a look inside now and see what we get inside. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, what we see inside is actually we've got some tubes for our water pump. We've got an extra, which doesn't come with many of the machines of this type. And this is a rotary table, which enables me to put cylindrical objects on here to rotate them for engraving. So if you've got a glass vase or a glass that you want to engrave or you know some sort of round wooden object you can rotate it on here and engrave it. How it works I don't know apart from the fact that it rotates. We shall find out how it connects up. We've got a connector here and the only other connector that I can see in here is the connector for the um, I don't know what this one is but it looks as though that should probably go in there but we'll find out when we start reading the instructions. One of the things that made me choose this particular brand was the what looked like from the pictures the reasonably good quality engineering that was involved, the little attention to detail like these slides here which are these slides here which are cross roller slides for both the X and the Y axis bearings and then we've got this little um, this little guide across the top here, a little chain guide for all the cables. And the fact that it has got a built-in um, air assist system was another key feature as far as I was concerned. Then we have this blue item in the bottom, which is not blue, it's actually an aluminium um, table. And I will just, it's got a plastic film on it, which is a plastic protective film, which we will just remove. So as you can see, now that I'm stripping this um, protective film off of here, um, and we shall need to do this before we use it, 
because we don't want to burn this plastic onto the surface of this aluminium. This laser is such a low power at 50 watts that it will burn through plastic but when it gets to this aluminium bed plate the power will just dissipate completely. Aluminium is a very difficult material to cut with a laser anyway um, so I'm absolutely confident that this bed plate will hardly get marked when we start using it but we shall wait and see. For such a cheap machine the quality of the engineering is not bad and the fact that it's got a motorised table on it as opposed to a manual table is quite staggering. You know you've got four lead screws one at each corner and all of the lead screws are driven by this tooth belt system so they stay fully synchronised and the, uh, the table goes up and down, motorised table goes up and down at a uniform rate. Now it's about three weeks since the machine arrived. Um, I've been on holiday for a period of time and really not done much physically with the machine. But in the meantime I've done a lot of research to try and find out about how to use the machine. And as a consequence of that research, um, I decided to do this series of videos because there's nothing really very, very deeply informative out there. Um, my plan now is to make you guys aware that these machines are definitely not toys. So we need to spend just 10 minutes or so going into some of the lightweight theory of laser cutting. So please do not skip this section because it contains some really very vitally important information that most of the hobbyists don't either know or understand about. Plastics seem very easy to cut with these machines, but they can be very, very dangerous. So please look at the next section.